Welcome to some room to grow. Today I'm going to share a great gardening tip that I learned last year from one of my longtime viewers. So shout out to Zach for this one. Now this tip could be helpful for many different climates and growing conditions, but just for a reference, I am growing in zone 5B in Iowa. And I am mostly going to be talking about the brassica family because that's what's given me the most trouble. But you can also apply this for other spring crops like onions and Swiss chard as well. Last year, I made a video about how I had transplanted all of our early spring crops into the garden and all of the brassicas had come this close to dying. Now, I had started all of our seeds in our grow room in the basement and took them through the usual hardening off process and then transplanted them out here only to watch all of our kale and broccoli and Brussels sprouts turn pink and purple and shrivel up completely. Now, I thought at first that maybe I just hadn't given them enough time to harden off, and I'm sure that would have helped to give them a bit more time, but one of my viewers had a much better suggestion. He recommended germinating those brassica seeds outside in a cold frame or a greenhouse. So I decided to try that myself this year using our cold frames. And obviously you're watching this video right now, so that means it worked really well. These plants had no problems whatsoever. I paid very close attention to them those first few days after transplanting, and it was truly as if nothing had happened. They just kept right on growing like it was nothing. Now, to be perfectly honest, this whole process didn't start out well, but as usual, that was my fault for trying to start those seeds outdoors in the middle of February, because that's when I would usually start them in our grow room in the basement. Brassica seeds are cold tolerant, but not that cold tolerant. They germinate best in a soil temperature around 65 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm sure I was able to achieve that during the day when the sun was out, keeping it nice and warm in the cold frames. But then overnight, temperatures would drop below freezing again, and that led to very poor germination rates. And the ones that did come up grew very slowly for quite a while, but eventually they got big enough to where I could give them a little bit of organic fertilizer to help them along. And finally, it was time to transplant them to their real homes in the garden. And I tell you, that transition could not have been easier. Now, I do really want to emphasize that it is not absolutely necessary to have a cold frame or a greenhouse in order for this to work. The really important thing is simply that those seeds are being germinated outside where they will be forced to deal with temperature changes, they'll be getting some direct sunlight, and that is what acclimates them to being outdoors so that when it's time to transplant them, they can go anywhere in the garden very easily. However, it is still a really good idea to keep those seedlings in some kind of container to keep them safe from wildlife and extreme weather changes, but there are many different things that you could use for that purpose instead of a cold frame. Whatever you choose to use, that container needs to have a clear lid to let in sunlight, and you need to be able to vent it somehow to circulate air so it doesn't get too hot inside and cook your poor seedlings. If you are lucky enough to have a greenhouse and you use that for germinating your seeds every year, then none of this is news to you. I know I'm not saying anything groundbreaking, but for me, this method is definitely a game changer. I never have any issues with other spring crops like lettuce and onions. Brassicas are just a particularly challenging case, but I know I'm not the only one who struggles with them, so hopefully this method can help you out too. If so, please leave a like, share the video out with your friends, subscribe for more content like this, and feel free to leave a comment down below if you have any other DIY cold frame ideas. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.